Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to hit the Achilles heel of the entire Flat Earth movement, and that's sunsets. So let's cue up the music and get going. Number six, the most hilarious thing about Flat Earth is that the most mundane everyday observations make absolutely no sense in your model. Like a sunset, a small sun above a flat Earth would simply recede high in the sky and get smaller and smaller until it fades away. It absolutely would not retain the same angular size and set below the horizon. Well, wait a minute, why would it fade away? If we can see thousands of miles with perfect clarity, why would it fade away? Well, because there's this little thing called night where you don't see the sun. That's because the sun set below the horizon and there's no longer sunlight on the part of the earth that you're on. That's why it's night. The only way that that could work with the sun going straight away is if it blinked out. So can you tell me how it will blink out? Besides that inconsistency, let's address this. The angular size does change slightly. Now, the reason that it doesn't change could be this. If the sun is so far away, but yet so bright, that it is not the actual sun you're looking at, but it is the light from the sun entering the local atmosphere within your field of vision, the angular size would remain about the same. You know, here's another typical ad hoc explanation that they come up with for something that's perfectly explainable on the globe model. The sun goes down because the earth is a rotating sphere, and as the earth rotates away from the sun going from west to east, the sun drops below the horizon. It's night. That's simple. In order to have the sun above the earth at all times, you would always see the sun, simply because even if it's not shining light directly on you, you'd see it in the distance, much as I can see the porch lights of my neighbor across the lake. Yet my yard is dark. This thought that somehow the sun is projected onto some dome that you're wearing, your personal dome, and as a result, it always stays at the same angular size is ridiculous. Where is your personal dome? Show it to me. Show me a measurement that indicates that it's truly there. Like, a, bounce some radar off of it. Bounce a laser off of it. Do anything to demonstrate that it's real and not just a made-up excuse, like so many others in Flat Earth, to try and explain things that are perfectly understandable. You know, the sun, as far as changing its angular size during the day, that's nonsense. That's called solar flare. You put a solar filter on your camera, and you will see the sun is exactly the same angular size all day long. Why is that? Because it's 93 million miles away. So there is no size change in the sun. And you can prove that by putting a proper solar filter on your camera. But you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to get huge amounts of lens flare when the sun is at noon. And then as the sun goes below the horizon, it appears to get a little smaller because it's going through all the atmosphere and some of that flare is filtered out. That's why the sun is red when it rises or sets rather than white or kind of a yellowish color when it's right above your head at noon. The one thing that he is talking about that does have a slight grain of truth, even though he doesn't understand what it is, is there is refraction that comes over the curve of the horizon. So as the sun is far out on the horizon, it appears a little higher in the sky than it actually is, maybe half of a degree. And that's a perfectly understandable effect of refraction coming through the layers of the atmosphere. And again, it's not that much. Sometimes it'll cause the bottom part of the sun to flatten out a little bit and widen. That's because the bottom part of the sun is affected first and kind of collapses in on the top part of the sun. And as a result, it's a little wider on the bottom than it is on the top, just at sunset. But again, these are well understood effects. The angular size doesn't change because the point source of light is outside of your personal local atmospheric visual range. Then when the point source of light recedes into the vanishing point beyond the 
scope of of resolution. You know, once again, he throws this word salad out. It's beyond your personal visual range. If you can see it, it's within your personal visual range. That's kind of what a personal visual range is. And then he starts talking about the Raleigh criteria, which he can't tell me the formula for or what it means. The Raleigh criteria simply means that you can tell two points of light as distinct points of light that are separated so long as they are at least one minute of angle apart. And that varies with distance as far as the distance between them. None of this has anything to do with sunsets. Now the question is, explain the sunset. How does the sun go down below the horizon and things get dark? You know, and I'll tell you, while you're at it, explain why I can see the top half of the moon but not the bottom half, even though they're both the same distance away. Why are they cut in half by the horizon? Why is that angular size of the moon exactly the same as the angular size of the moon when it's above my head? Have at it, my friend. That combined with occlusion, that's the translucence of air, you would, in fact, experience exactly what we observe. So that's the answer. It stays the same size because it's unbelievably far away and it sets below the horizon because the earth is a sphere that is turning. Even a toddler can understand this. It's so blatantly obvious that you have to resort to your typical ad hoc antics, talking about refractive effects that defy all logic and somehow magically apply to the sun, but nothing else. Well, if the premise is that you're looking at the actual sun, then you're saying that that source, that light source, is within your personal field of vision. Well, I think you would agree that at 93 million miles, it's not. No, what we're saying is that your personal field of vision nonsense is just that, nonsense. It's an ad hoc explanation. If you can see it, it's within your personal field of vision. We can see the sun, which is 93 million miles away. We can see Polaris, which is 400 light years away. We can see stars that are even further than that with our naked eyes, much less telescopes. This personal field of vision nonsense that you're putting out and trying to read off something you read in a wiki article about the Raleigh criterion, but didn't bother learning the formula for or understanding what it means or how it occurs, you know, these don't really phase people that actually know what's going on. Like, science and normal people. So continue trying to explain why the sun goes down below the horizon. And while you're at it, explain why the bottom of clouds are lit up by the setting and the rising sun. They're exactly the same reason, and that is that we are on a rotating spherical earth, and the sun sets because the earth is rotating away from it. It goes below the horizon of the earth. It's perfectly understood on the globe model. Tell me what it is on your model. So if you're looking at just the light striking the air and, and illuminating the air, which makes the brightness of the object that you're seeing, what we call the sun, that bright light in the sky, then obviously there is going to be some refraction. There's also going to be some uh, magnification and with the angle of incidence, you're going to have, of course, those two effects plus some diffraction and some diffusion. And all of that's taken into account. Yet you not only don't understand any of that, you can't demonstrate any of it. Now, Skiba lensing is a Pollard trick. It has to do with taking advantage of a Fresnel lens and certain parts of the Fresnel lens to give you an effect of the bottom disappearing. I can take that same Fresnel lens and make the top disappear, or the left and the right sides disappear. Unless you can demonstrate any of this, unless you can prove it and mathematically show how it works, you don't have any evidence here, so your claims are simply dismissed. Come up with a real reason on your flat earth model that we get a sunset with the sun going below the horizon, which is what we physically observe. Well, guys, thank you very much for stopping by. The first efforts of the Flat Earth to explain the sunset was a cacophony of 
word salad and buzzwords, diffraction, personal atmospheric visual range, atmospheric obstruction, which only affects the bottom part of objects, but not the top part of objects, diffraction, which they have no understanding of whatsoever, and basically a hodgepodge of excuses as to why atmospheric effects will cause the sun to appear to set below the horizon every night and rise the next morning on the opposite side of the earth. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. And thank you very much for stopping by. And by the way, Flat Earth, explain to me why that sun pillar is lighting up the bottom side of the clouds at sunset. You can clearly see the sun on the horizon. You can clearly see the redness and the underlighting of the clouds. How's that work out? Take care, guys.